Thank you, The Times, 25 to 8. If you get cancer, you are treated by the NHS. It is your right. If you get dementia, perhaps later in life, you are to a horrible extent on your own. The NHS is free at the point of use. Social care, upon which growing numbers of us depend, is not. It is one of the biggest causes of misery. And yet politicians have failed again and again to come up with workable solutions that bring money into this creaking, ramshackle system. It's nearly three years since I came here to Bristol to a hospital right here in the centre of the city to meet John Sibley and his mother Iris. She'd been stuck in hospital, nowhere to look after her outside. She was a victim of a broken system and yet, like so many of her generation, never defeated, never down. We sang carols last night, didn't we, Mum? Yeah. Go on then, give us a tune. Away in a manger. No Eventually, after seven months, they no did finally manage to find Mama home. And she had a, a really nice end to her life. She was well looked after. Do you think anything has changed in the wider picture for the better since we talked then in that hospital room? No, it's got worse. She'd still be in there for months and months now. Councils haven't increased the amount of money that they pay. So it makes finding homes for people who are dependent on the council to pay more and more difficult. If you were to go and check with any hospital in the land, you would find that they all have old, old people yeah. stuck in hospital waiting for placements. How do we make social care work? That question hangs over this election, but it's wider than party politics. It's an issue that requires a national debate and a national consensus. Sally Warren is a former director of social care policy at the Department of Health. What drives the problem is at the moment we have a social care system that the public really don't understand very well. They think it's part of the NHS, so they expect it to be free at the point of use. And then when they finally need to interact with the system, what they discover is a service where um, who's eligible for publicly funded support is really quite constrained. So you have to have a high level of need for care and you have to have quite a low level of assets. And that means that a lot of people are left to look after their own needs by themselves and that can cost them a, a lot of of money. So around one in 10 of us when we're over 65 may face costs of more than £100,000 and to a lot of people that feels really very unfair and that unfairness has been what's driving all the attempts to make reform happen over the last couple of decades. That leads us then to solutions and what solutions might be possible, might be workable, might be agreed between the parties. Well here's one, the House of Lords Economics Committee led by the Conservative Lord Forsyth reached a cross-party consensus, according to Alistair Darling, the former Labour Chancellor, who's also on the committee. We thought income tax or other taxes were the best way of paying for free personal care. So if you need care when you're older, personal care is covered. You still have to pay for your accommodation and uh, living costs. It's exactly the same system that's been in Scotland for almost 20 years now, and it's readily understood, and we thought that was the best way of doing it. Mike Forsyth and I used to joke it wasn't clear whether he was moving to the left or I'm moving to the right. But all of us around the table recognise there are some things that, frankly, only the state can do, or it's fairer that the state does. It's rather like the health service. There's a recognition, a cross-party recognition, that the NHS ought to be provided by the state for the benefit of everyone in this country and it's funded out of general taxation. One of the odd facts about social care is that clever, non-partisan people have come up with solutions or partial solutions. Here's Camilla Cavendish, who was Director of Policy for David Cameron, who's worried about the taxpayer model for funding, but very keen on other potential solutions. We now have older households have a higher income than younger working households. So if you just charge everybody, it's not necessarily fair, and you might want to charge older people a bit more. In Japan, they have co-payments built in, so the richer people actually do pay a bit more when they take out the services. And Japan is finding that as the population ages, the costs of these schemes are going up, and in fact they're having to hit the rich progressively harder. But it does enable you again to make it much, much more progressive than our income tax system would allow. There you are, that was a nice cup of tea, thank you. You're all okay? Yes, I'm yes, fine. Yes, don't need a hand? No, no, I'm fine. The stress of that going on and not being able to do any more without John going up to see him, 
um, he, he, he would have, have died. He would, he would have, have died. Dorothy Greenhill is remembering her father, Alfred, another person utterly failed by the system, this time in a London borough. Dorothy's husband, John, used to visit Alfred once a week and saw him declining as he sat in his flat with the care that he had been promised, just not coming up to scratch. There was no carer there. He was sitting in a chair in jogging bottoms, no socks or slippers on, and he was utterly dishevelled. And I thought he hasn't been washed or cared for anything. He didn't seem as though he wanted to be here anymore. He was just not interested. If I suggested putting on some earphones, which he could hear by and watch some of the old Vera Lynn uh, recordings and that, he, he just wasn't interested at all. And he was falling more, and then he began to go in and out of hospital like a yo-yo. And then when he finally went into hospital, the, we understand that the hospital gave the local authority an ultimatum, get a proper care package in, or there would be some repercussions. And that brings us full circle, back to the NHS, which increasingly finds itself having to take responsibility for what's going wrong. Neil Dixon is from the representative body, the NHS Confederation. This is not just a question of discharging patients. It's about the whole demand that's made on the system and the fact that social care has now reached such a depth, as it were, of not meeting need that this is flowing into the National Health Service in a way that people had not seen before. Going ahead, the NHS will not be able to deliver what's expected from it unless we fix social care. What a mess it all is. Back in Bristol, John Sibley, son of Iris, blames politicians, but our wider culture too. It is astonishing the way that old people are just not valued. You know, you look at some cultures, you know, where older people are cherished and valued because of their wisdom and because of what they did for you when you were young. You know, it seems to me that in our culture, when they get past the age of being able to pay tax, they don't count. We've got to change it, haven't we? And we've got to change it. Mm. And it's a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. John Sibley talking to me uh, in his sitting room here in Bristol. And we will be talking to Andrew Dillnott, uh, among other people on this subject, in uh, an hour or so's time. Andrew Dillnott, of course, author of one of the many, many, many reports into social care that came up with solutions that were shelved. <laughs>